then we will begin. So, um, as we were saying, we are from Ally Solutions and we're really happy to be here today. Uh, we're really happy to see so many of you here as well to share our interest in workflows. Uh, so, uh, we're going to uh, jump right into this. Um, Ally Solutions is uh, a company part of the Network Innovation Group. And shortly about us, we are about 11 people and we have our head office uh, here in Stockholm, outside Nacka. Uh, and uh, on stage today, we are two people. It's myself, Thomas Lundgren, and my colleague Björn Olkist. And at Ally Solutions, we are uh, product managers for some of our automation uh, components, you might say. Um, as a company, we have a lot of different partnerships with other companies on the market. And uh, uh, the reason for this is that we want to pick the best technologies out there and combine those into workflows that suit our customers' needs in the best way. So that's kind of what we specialize in. Uh, you re may recognize some of these different vendors. They are, some of them are here also today, apart from us. Um, we uh, uh, focus on uh, some different areas uh, with workflows and other things that we do. Uh, automation, uh, brand and color management. We work with packaging and labeling and also large format printing. And of course, a lot of these things overlap back and forth, especially in the workflow arena. Um, the headline that we have today is how to release the potential of your production equipment, especially for digital and large format. And um, when we thought about this a bit, we realized that it's actually all about you know, keeping our hardware equipment running full time. So uh, we need to deliver files to our production equipment fast enough. And, uh, of course, we want to print the correct result from the beginning, so we need to be very secure in how we work. And uh, we also want to make sure that we are printing things in the optimum fashion. And uh, all of these things, speed, security, uh, flexibility and optimization are all things that we can achieve and improve on using workflow automation. Um, so to uh, highlight this, because we could probably go on all day about this, uh, we decided to get a bit practical with you and share our kind of top five favorite things that we automate. And these are things taken from real life production workflows that we have created for various things. Um, and uh, to start off, to show you that automation doesn't need to be that complicated, I will hand you over to Björn to tell you a bit more about the simple workflow components. Yes. Can you hear me? Yep. Um, to start it off with number one, the simple workflow. Um, automation does not have to be complicated. Um, it can be used to automate basic tasks that will still save you and your company uh, a lot of time. Um, it will help your production to be faster and it will help your production to be more secure in the sense that a task will be done the same way every time and it will always be correct. Uh, and also it will, be, it will free up time for other tasks. Um, in most of our examples here we use M-Focus Switch, that probably a lot of you are already familiar with. Um, this first example here, we see an example of a very basic workflow. Um, it does just one task. It, it's just one task, but it's still very much efficient. Um, in this particular case, we just had one input folder, a hot folder, and one output folder, and we have a Photoshop configurator as an engine. Um, and with the Photoshop configurator, we can, for example, change the resolution of an image, uh, change the color space, convert a PDF to a JPEG, and so on. And these are basic tasks that are still managed manually by many. Um, and even if the manual task in itself is, is fast and it's easy uh, and quick, uh, the whole procedure is very time consuming in the long run. Uh, so this will save you a lot of time. Um, in this other example here, uh, it's an example from real life. Uh, it's a workflow that we set up for a customer. Uh, we created a very simple workflow. Same here. Uh, 
in the folder, out folder, out the folder. Um, it's for example that printed uh, prints rollups, uh, and what this workflow does is that it's just with the help of a piece of server, we add 15 centimeters of white space at the bottom of the print, uh, and this may sound very simple because it is. Um, but this task was made manually for each and every print before this. Um, and this workflow took us maybe 20 minutes to set up. But it saves at least 20 minutes every day for the print press operator and for the company. Uh, and 20 minutes every day, that's more than one and a half hour every week. That's several hours every month. And that's many hours every year. That's even more than a work week every year. So by using simple workflows like this, there are time and money to be saved. So why should we start small? Uh, first of all, it's a great way to learn both the software in itself and how you and your organization can benefit from automation. Uh, great things have small beginnings, uh, and all small workflows can be combined, uh, and they are free to grow with your needs. That brings us to point number two, data-driven automation. Uh, this is where automation gets automated for you, I would say. Uh, by getting data, or metadata, uh, either from your own systems or other systems, or directly from your customer, you can use that data to control your workflow dynamically. Uh, it will make your workflows and your production more flexible and more secure. Uh, these two examples here um, show the one in the corner that shows an upload form at the customer's end, where we make the customer add all the information we need production, uh, like customer information, name and company and email address and so on, uh, media type, uh, amount of prints, color or, or black and white, and so on. Uh, and all this information is then useful to run the production dynamically in our workflows. Uh, the other example shows an XML ticket from an internal system. Uh, but the information and the usage of the information is basically the same in both cases. Um, for example, this is a switch workflow uh, where the input on the far left uh, is a PDF and a corresponding XML with all the information we need. So in this case, we would use it to um, control the impositioning based on format in the data, uh, to control color conversion uh, based on selected paper, um, media, and so on. Uh, we use it to send an email to the correct customer, and so on. Uh, point number three. Efficient communication. There is a lot of time to be saved by using a more efficient communication uh, and how we handle proofs and approvals. Um, we have two different approaches to manage approvals. We have the workflow way uh, and we have the way of a complete communication platform. Uh, in this first example here, we use a simple workflow to create a rasterized proof to send an email to the right person and to keep the workflow going based on the response from the customer or product manager or whoever the right person is. Um, we, can also, we can put this function anywhere in a workflow and use it dynamically. Here is an example of how such a function can be integrated in a workflow. Uh, it's actually the same workflow as the last example. Um, we use it at the right side here. 
And in this case, we use the uh, email address from the input data. We send a link to a approval portal to the right person. Um, that's a link in the approval portal. We can see a rasterized file. Uh, and then based on the response from the recipient, in this case, OK or not OK, we can keep the workflow going. The other approach is to use a complete project management system, like uh, in this case ES from DALI. Um, this is a complete project and approval management system, and we use we have all information regarding job status, approvals, annotations, and so on. is handled in one central platform. Um, so the main point here is that by having efficient communication. That is one of the most powerful ways to make your production more effective. It will save you a lot of time and money, and it will make your production more secure. Back to Thomas. All right. So our uh, favorite number four in terms of automation, uh, and. Uh, I think that this is one of the key things when we talk about utilizing our printing equipment in the most effective way, and that is to create the most effective in positioning. So how do we actually uh, combine our jobs into an order? How do we, uh, how do, we do the job layouts and so on? And uh, uh, we've been doing this for quite some time, but when we started looking into this for large format, we actually came into the question if it was really even possible or not in a good way. And uh, we've been doing automated in positioning for, for a long time when we talk about uh, fixed documents like A4 brochures or things like this, things that have a, a uh, standard size, X number of pages and so on. Those things can easily be automated. But when we talk about large format production, we run into cases where every single job we're going to produce has a different format. Uh, we have objects which have irregular shapes in it. We have uh, objects that require post-processing like contour cutting and things like this. So it becomes more difficult to run these things effectively. And um, uh, we uh, started a partnership with a company called uh, Telia a while back. Uh, and they have a uh, solution called Phoenix, which contains something called the Impositioning AI, artificial intelligence for impositioning. Sounds really cool. Uh, and it is quite cool, it does some amazing things for us. Um, what we do with this kind of functionality is that we input all the relevant data about our large format and digital printing equipment into our central mathematical model, or AI brain in this case. It can be anything from all our different uh, stocks that we have, so all our different medias, their sizes, uh, weights and so on. If we have role-based printing equipment, we have the sheet widths and so on, roll widths in the system. And we combine that by adding information about the output devices we have. So which kind of printing presses or uh, large format printers do we have? How big are they? How fast do they run? How long does it take to change jobs in the machines and so on? All this information we feed our central uh, brain with and to make the calculations really powerful. We also add the financial side of things. So how much does a machine cost to run? How much is the cost for changing jobs in the machine? What's the square meter price of the media we're using? And so on. All this information goes into our calculation model in this system. And if we combine that with Björn's item number two on our favorite list, the data-driven workflow, where we can have information coming into our workflow about what the customer has ordered, what media he wants to have things printed on, how many copies he wants and so on, we can start doing some really cool things. And um, to show you what we automate, I think we have to show you manually what we do, actually. Uh, so this is what the software looks like if you are running it as an operator. So we have all our different printing presses, substrates. We input the data about pricing and the uh, format capabilities of our output devices what kind of marks and stuff need to be added for production, for cutting and so on. Uh, we input information about the materials, the weights and so on. And of course, we combine this to tell the system which materials can be used on which printing device. Um, 
And if we start a new job in a system like this, we can immediately feed it with an order file instead of the files themselves. And if that contains the order quantity, the substrate to print on, uh, the files we're going to produce, and so on, we can start to automate and we can start to calculate. And this is, of course, information that can come from the customer or from our order system or wherever we choose to get this. Uh, so on the uh, uh, top left side, you can see that the products are coming into the system. And we can see all the properties of the products we have. And you see that these are uh, a uh, variety of, of uh, files, some with cutting contours, uh, some are regular shaped. Uh, so it's a mix. Uh, and in the calculation model, we can decide on how to group items together, how we want to position them, what kind of cutting we have, so we have a good strategy for placing our files and so on. And then we start to do the calculation based on which presses we want to be able to print on and so on. And you can see that the software also removes the printing presses that don't have the capability to print these jobs at all. Uh, we can also choose which kind of strategy we want for our calculation. Do we want to focus on minimum material waste? Do we want to focus on having the fastest production run? Um, the fewest layouts possible and so on. And you can see that the software starts to giving us some uh, different results. And the top one here uh, is the favorite right now based on waste. It's going to print four layouts on two different presses. It's going to take a certain time to produce this and so on. And this is all also information that we can get out of the system. Use it for planning or whatever we want to do next. So this is the report where we can see that, okay, four layouts need to be printed in X number of copies. And this is what it's going to look like. And you can see it does true shape nesting, places things in the most efficient way, adds the marks we need automatically, and so on. And uh, when we talk about this kind of technology in a workflow, uh, again, this is switch. And we're adding the imposition AI just as a node in the workflow. Um, and uh, we feed it information based on uh, order uh, system communication or customer input and so on. And it's done seamlessly in the workflow. And we deliver the files for printing, cutting, and the reports somewhere in the production workflow. So that was our favorite number four. And uh, last but not least, our number five, which brings us to efficient color management. Uh, and when we talk about large format in general, we see that there is a great demand for color management right now. We see that we have to fulfill the, uh, the, uh, uh, the expectations of our customers in a, in a better way than before. We have to meet brand customers and so on also in large format printing and make it look like all the other products we use. Um, so we are doing more and more work on this. And there's also a huge upside in terms of automation if we do really good color management. I'll tell you a bit more about that also. Um, so what we do in this arena is that we add central color management solutions to the workflow. Um, one technology is from DMG called Smart Profiler. And uh, it's a very simple to use intuitive interface to calibrate any kind of output device. So if it's a large format printing machine, if it's a digital press, doesn't matter. It's a very straightforward, fast way of calibrating and profiling our machines to make them look the same or as close as possible. Um, and this gives us some really nice advantages in terms of automation and quality. So the idea is that when we receive a file, we can produce it anywhere and the result should be the same. That would be our ideal circumstance in this case. Um, so we're talking about workflow and automation. So is, uh, is color management really automation? And uh, maybe not really, because it's a process that you have to do on each and every machine. We are a lot more efficient in how we handle the machines than ever before, because the tools are a lot better. But the main thing with color management and automation is the upsides once we're there. Um, so if we want to print the same job on two or three inkjet machines to increase our throughput, we can do that because the result will be the same if they're properly calibrated. If we want to print uh, uh, on the machine that is available to us right now, we can do that. We don't have to wait and print the job on the same machine as we printed on last time because we're afraid it's not going to look the same. We can just run it on whatever machine is available. Uh, and both of these things gives us a great flexibility in the workflow. 
And if we look back at the impositioning technology, where the imposition AI actually wanted us to use two different machines to fulfill the same order, this is an opportunity that opens up if the color management is done correctly. Um, so some really good benefits if you put some effort into this. And of course, when we talk about the communication with the customers, many of you might be giving your customers a proof today, saying that if you order this job from us, this is what you're going to get. And it would, of course, be nice if that proof was valid regardless of which machine you're going to produce it on. It makes the communication so much easier, so much more clear, and the customer's expectations will also be a lot more clear in this case. Um, and, of course, in terms of automation, this kind of technology also has APIs, hot folder integration, connections to workflows like switch and to Dalim's twist and so on. And that means that the color management, once it's calibrated, can also be seamlessly integrated into our workflow. So in this case, we have a workflow where we receive files, we do the impositioning or nesting, we plan it on certain machines, and we do the correct color management to adapt these jobs to the right machine on the way to the output. Um, and of course, as Björn mentioned initially, we had a very simple starting point in our favorite number one. But if we start to look at all these different uh, favorites that we have and we start combining them, we quickly understand that we can do some really powerful workflow automation by combining a few different technologies into one workflow. Uh, so the message here is the uh, is, uh, same as we heard in, from a lot of other speakers today. Start simple, learn how to do it, grow your workflow, add more and more functionality. It doesn't have to, have to happen all at once, but you can do some really cool stuff that will save you a huge amount of time, add workflow security and flexibility. Um, we do this a lot with many different customers in many different fashions. So we will be available in the discovery zone afterwards. So come to us with any questions you might have on things that you want to automate. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free. Any questions? I think this was very good. Uh, very hands-on, guys. Thank you very much. And these are, these are, I know these are all things you have found in customers. Yes. Yes. yes so this is not uh, anything they just made up for this presentation. This is done by customers, as customers. Yeah. And Every day. <laughs> and, and, the problem, and, and I see this a lot. I'm also traveling a lot. I work as an independent consultant. I travel a lot around. I'm chairman of a couple of print companies. I see this a lot. We need to do this now. We have to start. So hopefully this was one way that you can share all these examples. Yeah, and the idea is to get you a bit inspired, inspired. to do these things. Yeah. So please go and talk to these guys. They know what they're doing. There's, and, uh, I think this is fantastic, and by, by using smaller workflows, when you combine them, they become even more smart. That's when the magic happens. Then when the magic happens, when you connect them. And, but you have to start with the first one. And very few has not even started with the first one. Hmm. And that's the problem. Or opportunity. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, whatever you want to call it, we, we can only get better. Okay, if there aren't any specific questions to these guys, I will make, well, please give them a round of applause.